Welcome back to non-detailing car related content here at Sam's Detailing. Now you're probably wondering why have I got all the air suspension sat out here. So basically, let's run through what happened with the air suspension system. Installed it, blew the front two bags, got it loaded onto recovery. That pretty much sent me into a little bit of a depression. Then it took two months to get new bags. That sent me a bit more into depression. And then managed to fit the new bags. And then I got a leak from a couple of connectors. That annoyed me a bit more, a bit more depressed. And then more recently, I've noticed that the rear right bag would drop overnight, indicating another leak. I had a quick look, couldn't really find the leak. So at this point, I literally just gave up, got fed up, and I was like, I am going back to my coilovers that Silver's very nicely provided to me back in 2019. Now, I don't know if this was down to my installation skills. It wasn't. I, I think I installed it perfectly fine, apart from the front two bags. But whatever. We are now officially on coilovers. Fixed, nice, easy to maintain, easy to drive, lovely to drive actually. Drives really nicely, really flat. Got some good lowering going. I'm happy, don't need to worry about all of this shit anymore. So we are now officially on coilovers, silver suspension. I'm happy, the car's happy. I feel a lot more relaxed driving it. I don't have this paranoid thing that an airbag's gonna blow and I'm gonna suddenly drop and rip off my kit. So. Why are we here today? You're probably wondering. Well, the aim for today is to fix all the stone chips that I've gathered on the front bumper, but most importantly down here. You see all that peppering, and I told you in the last video I was gonna show you how to fix this with a bit of paint from your local uh, body shop supply and a bit of uh, thinners. I'm gonna show you how to fill these in, easy, fast, and make it look brand new without painting or spraying. Let's do it. The plan of action is thus. I'm gonna lift the car up so we can access the back, the rear side skirt a bit better. Now you're probably wondering why we're not doing this on the ramp, because it's on coilovers. It's a bit harder to get on the ramp at the moment and I haven't got the adjustable ramp things to get it to lift this car basically. On airlift, I just cranked it all the way up and it went straight under the arms, but not anymore. So that's the disadvantage of coilovers. Can't even get that under. Oh, bruv. This is really low, you know? Why does everything just turn into more work? We'll lift it from the back. Fuck now, that is close to the floor. Step two is uh, cleaning the area with some quick detailer. Now, it doesn't really matter if we mar it or scratch it because we're polishing this entire panel, basically. So, let's clean it up. Oh, that sounded very scratchy. I hope this goes right. You know what the issue is? We've got gravity in three days and this car's on the show. <sighs> okay. I tried to flip it. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it normally. I'll do it normally. I'll do it all. Okay. So let's get a bit scientific and actually let me explain to you what we're actually doing. So. If you imagine what a stone chip is, a stone chip is, has hit the paintwork and knocked out a layer of paint and it's gone down to the subsurface. So if that was your paint layer, we now have a V shape in there and that is your stone chip. So what we're gonna do right now is, I've purchased some cellulose paintwork, we're gonna thin it down with some uh, anti-blooming thinners, like we did when we were spray painting the Merc. But what we're gonna do is mix that up, the black paint, apply it onto the surface, and then we're gonna machine polish away all of that paint we applied and in the V shape will be left behind that cellulose paint covering up the stone chip. But instead of doing it for one stone chip, we're gonna do it for the entire road rash. So this is why this technique works really well. I hope that makes sense. It will make a lot more sense as I do it. We're gonna do 50-50, so I'm just gonna... 
should start with it. <laughs> Let's do 50 more. This looks about right. This, this may be too watery, I'm not sure. We'll get it on. You don't want it too thick, but we want it watery enough that it fills in the holes and then it will polish off easily. But I'm not sure if this is too watery. This was a 50-50 mix. <laughs> I've got a flashback for the work when I got really dizzy. That is a pop-up. I need to actually get a close-up video of it though. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> That's not gonna come out, is it? That will come out. That fucking better come out. This is my favourite jumpsuit. That's what happens if you grab the paint. What? what you grabbed it off. Okay, so what the plan is right now, so. I've got a little applicator. You want to use either an applicator sponge or a lint-free cloth. You do not want to mix lint into the paint. So sponges for me is the easiest. Dab it in, work it into the section. Basically, we're just gonna paint the sill. Mm, it's quite watery. Okay, so it's a little bit thin, but also at the same time, we've got a lot of road rash here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna apply this first layer, let it dry, and we'll build up on the second and third layer to do the coverage rather than thicken up the, thickening up the paint. I don't wanna thicken up the paint too much. Um, so yeah, let's let this first one dry, then we'll come back to it and put a second and third layer on it. So the first layer's dried a bit-ish. It's like a bit tacky now, so we can accept the second layer. So let's just get that on. Same thing, dabbing it on. <laughs> dabbing it on. <laughs> That's why I'm a loser. The second layer has gone on a bit thicker. I've lost a little bit of confidence with this, to be honest, because I think it's a lot of road rash to cover up. I don't know if, let's find out, I don't know. This is the third layer we're now putting on. And then I think this should be the, yeah, that's dry. This should be the final layer. And then we can polish after this is dry, I think. Let's see, let's see. Oh, that was wet. Okay. This requires a very delicate hand, if you know what I mean. Charlie, do you know what I mean? Okay, I think I can work with that. <laughs> the third layer on there. We're now gonna go for lunch, let that dry for an hour. In theory, when we come back, it should be pretty hardened and be ready to machine polish, in theory. Well, it's definitely dry, but it's very rough. But I don't know why. I am tempted to dry sand this first. And where did I put that Japanese sandpaper? Oh, there it is, there we go. That's the expensive Japanese dry sandpaper that I purchased to dry sand the kit before Nakai came. And this stuff is absolutely magnificent. When I mean magnificent, I truly mean magnificent. That is not working at all. That's just taking the paint clean off. That's literally not working. To the point where I can't even fix that. That's just taking the paint right off. That's the end of that video. I was worried about that happening. That needs a respray. Don't know what else to say. It's worth a shot. The paint was what, 12 quid? But that is, that is, it's just too fucked. Though I, I, it's too fucked.
Well, I guess we go to my backup plan. Thank <laughs> you.